This is my son Zachariah. And I want him to grow up in a world where being okay with your faith is okay. By starting a podcast in 2017 of two very normal Muslim guys talking about very normal things. Right. Never heard of a curry? Freshly Grounded has made thousands of people realize that there are many other people like them in the world. Normal young Muslims who want to be successful in this world and the next. Freshly Grounded, let's make some noise. <laughs> But our goals are even bigger. We want to do things like be the biggest company in the world so we can provide people with jobs without sacrificing their morals or the income that they deserve. Or, or provide scholarships to people who want to become doctors or scientists or astronauts. Or just continue providing clean, relatable content for people to consume. All of those things require us to grow. Now alongside many other things, with a recent realization that I'm losing my hair, we want to reach these huge goals sooner rather than later. More subscribers equals more eyes equals more of a chance for us to reach these huge goals. There's roughly 87 days left until Ramadan and we have a mission to reach 100 thousand subscribers before then. Just go to this link and enter your name and email. That's it. You'll be sent a custom referral code that you can send out to your friends and family and that referral link will point to the Freshly Grounded subscribe button. And the person with the very top referral link will win Apple AirPods Pro. Now will you please go and help Zakaria become an astronaut? And welcome to a Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? Adam Afghan. <laughs> <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I think it's love, but that was the best intro I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. It's an honour to have you. I'm the last. Bef- good to be here. It's good to be back. Yeah, you're you're regular, man. You're regular. Listen, before we get started, Adam. Today, as yeah. we speak, like right now, as you mm. and I are speaking, it's the f- exactly four years since we released episode one of Freshly Grounded. So really? I command you to congratulate me. Congratulations on Thank you. your Thank you. four year anniversary. Thank Freshly you. grounded. Mashallah. Thank Thank you amazing. Much. Yeah, we finally made it. Well, not mine, ours, all of us. Oh, as a, all of us. As a community. Right. Also mine. Yeah, you're definitely in the <laughs> you're definitely in the inner circle of Freshly Grounded. I'm gonna try it. That'd be jolly. Cool. I think once you hit once you hit past like, I don't know, two or three episodes, you're like <laughs> very much so. You get you get sent yeah. a special a special card sort of privileges like two point six percent discount off at Costa. Yeah. Joking, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, you get you don't really get anything, but you get love and you do love. Uh, love is what you this is what you need. Virtual you love, need. yeah. Virtual really love, need. yeah. No hugging, no actual interaction with humans. Well, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> How are you doing, Adam? Man, how's things? I'm I'm giving getting a very positive vibe from you. Alhamdulillah, it's good to um, talk to different people. Like. It's good to get out of the routine and do something different. To be honest, I'm a bit excited. Have you been able yeah. to get out of the routine much? No. So it's like been stuck at home. Like, honestly, you know what? I've run out of things to do. I've I've probably watched, there's nothing really to watch on Netflix, Amazon Prime. Um, run out of stuff to do. So doing a bit of cleaning, just walking around. Trying to get 10,000 steps a day is difficult. Um, How are you getting 10,000 steps a day from home? It's, it's difficult. So... I try to just walk everywhere. Um, if you, uh, what I calculate, if you walk, try to walk as much as you can in your house, you get, you can get about three thousand max. We have to go to the shop or something and walk there, and it's, it's really annoying. To, Ten thousand steps is actually quite a lot. It's just a lot of steps, which is annoying. But you got, I got miles. Something. How many miles uh, does the well, average person have to walk? I think it's like, I think it's like, I think it's like seven kilometers. Ooh. Ten thousand steps. So was that How five many? miles? Yeah. Miles is 10,000 mm. steps. People Google it all yeah. the time, apparently. It came up right in my suggested. In the past decade, as pedometers have profil- pro- pro- proliferated in smartphone apps and wearable fitness trackers, another benchmark has entered the lexicon. The lexicon? Go on, the words. Take at least 10,000 steps a day, which is about five miles of walking for most people. You're right. You're bang yeah, on. That's a lot. It's a lot of walking. Five miles is a lot. 
it's yes, yeah, a heck of a lot. And that's a day. Wow. It's crazy. Mm. So, yeah. so even on a non-quarantine day, me people, you're meant to. I don't think I would hit five miles of walking. And what is that meant to be? Is that the is that the general like standard as advised by health authorities, or is that just like the um, uh, culture and fashion? What is it? I don't. So I got a Fitbit. Alhamdulillah, it's decent. So the, the, it's like the default setting is ten thousand steps a day, and I've just been doing that. I don't know where that came from or why or someone. I don't know. But I'm just trying to do that. It's really hard, though. It's not as easy as it seems at all. Yeah, I remember I had set a uh, I had set a a calorie target on my smartwatch, Ooh. which was the calories to burn in a day, and I never hit. Yeah. It. I, and I had it. Quite How much was it? I can't remember what I had, but mm. in, in in essence, you in order to be in a calorie deficit, so to lose weight, you would need mm. to burn more calories in your day than yeah. you consume right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i think i had it set at not more than my calories that i eat Intake. but i had it at like yeah. maybe 800 or something but i don't that's think i was hitting it i don't know still, that seems like a lot it does doesn't I don't it? Know. Yeah. Calories. i was skipping and everything oh yeah how is how's your diet how's your like exercise routine diet going you making okay, donuts so skipping yeah, bro. Okay, so <laughs> I actually mentioned I have. Oh, I've got a video coming up. So I've shot this video. I haven't uh, yeah. released it yet, but it should be coming out this weekend, maybe. And the video is actually about this exact topic. It's about my lockdown one compared to lockdown now, right? And as you rightly said, in lockdown one, I was like doing the baking videos of the donuts and and all of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And I was doing a bit of skipping as well, but um, a lot of the donuts, like ninety percent donuts, ten percent skipping, yeah. kind of. It's a good ratio. That's a good percentage ratio. Yeah, and I felt horrible, bro, at the end of lockdown. <laughs> like, I was physically the heaviest I'd been. I was frustrated mentally. I was overworking because mm -hmm. I promised an episode of Freshly Grounded a day. <laughs> that's was ridiculous. The I want. Like that is absolutely. Was that was that your idea? That, that's My a terrible idea, idea. bro. <laughs> I was. That's I was a like, terrible idea. I was like, oh, um, Freshly Grounded. <laughs> we're going into a lockdown. So like, let's like double down and everything. Not, oh, we're going to lockdown. So let me assess the situation. I'm about to go into a massive change in life. One that in my lifetime I've never gone into. So let me just maintain Freshly Grounded once a week, virtually, and just figure things out. I went, no, this is a great opportunity. People want content, <laughs> episode a day. And bro, I was burnt out, man. Like physically, yeah, mentally, I was, I was in a really bad, like after mm. Ramadan, so like you're talking what July time I was in a yeah. really bad state mentally physically I was um physically I was just out of shape and that as you know has a huge impact on your mental mm -hmm. state and mm -hmm. um this lockdown I feel the complete opposite alhamdulillah I'm I'm, I'm happier than I was last lockdown I'm uh, in a lot much better shape I lost about 7 8 kilos uh, that I put on wow. uh, in nice. that lockdown and um I talk in that video about how Mm -hmm. to do it how i did how i did it and and how i feel before and after so i won't let the cat, cat out of the bag now i won't spoil the secret yeah subscribe to my personal youtube for that but i do feel i do feel good although um exercising is always difficult in lockdown isn't it yeah you, you it's boring. Much exercise other than the ten thousand so steps that you're attempting walk, this walking ten thousand steps has got an extremely boring so i don't know i'm not doing anything walking is like the baseline I'm trying to do sit-ups and press-ups every day but i just don't know the most effective thing to do um, and what's happened is that I have to wear baggier clothes now because none of my other clothes fit me because of the slow increase of weight because of the decrease in exercise. So um, basically, I don't want to get a whole new wardrobe. So I have to lose the weight to save money so I can wear my previous coronavirus clothes. It's like I've had a, it's not like I've had a child. It's like I've had a child. I've had a child. And I need to get drop the weight back to normal before child life you look a long body boy you look great so i i do think it's that but, but i do it's think it's you are, I, I think perhaps you're being a bit hard on yourself but i will say this um one method that has worked for me so well has mm -hmm. been um it's just like the, the, the classic it's not nothing surprising but you know people talk about having one cheat day a week yeah bro i i basically said to myself instead of saying all right i'm gonna eat 
salads and calorie count, all this kind of stuff throughout my week. I said to myself, I'm going to eat what I normally eat, right? So that means if mm-hmm. I'm passing through a KFC and I'm hungry, it's too much of a temptation, bro, for me to not get the KFC. There's a drive through Halal KFC, right, in West London. So if you're telling mm-hmm. me that on this main road that I pass every now and again, I'm hungry, and if I try and commit to something as crazy as going past that KFC and turning down a... Uh, your uh, chicken, you know, Philip burger at the very least, a chicken Philip burger meal yeah. at the very most, you're yeah. talking a tower burger with chips mm-hmm. to, yeah. to, uh, yeah. Mayo to wings of 99p, a bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of the dip. You're, that's an impossible task, right? So I didn't, I didn't yeah. promise myself that. I said to myself, and this wasn't based on any science, this is complete bro science, right? I yeah. said to myself, forget the fad diets, right? Mm-hmm. If I can just stop the things that I believe are my biggest fit nut, the things that are making me yeah. put on the most weight, right? The, the things that I, I'm just, if I stop them, I'd probably make some great progress. Then I'll allow myself to eat everything else, including stopping off a KFC. And everything. So yeah. what I've done is I've reduced the the pressure on myself, right? I've just yeah. re- I've just removed the main things. And so for that, you obviously would know what those main things are for you. So for me, the main things was always um, anything pastry related, so any croissants, mm-hmm. anything like that. Yes. Chocolate, anything chocolate related, and um, cakes, right? Chocolates, cakes, pastries. So uh, biscuits. Sorry, biscuit biscuits were the big one. Biscuits. Oh, biscuits. Drugs, yeah, literally drugs. Not literally. Yeah, they are drugs. They are drugs. They they, they, they are drugs. Type so, of drugs, I believe. Um, those four <laughs> things are things that I cut out, and and that mm. sounds like a lot of things, but it's not, bro. Because I haven't even cut it's out deep right. fried food. I haven't cut out chips. Like there's some things you haven't cut out. That um, yeah. And and so the difficult thing was when you go to people's house and then they offer you a biscuit with it with your tea and you're like no 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 sorry or or they like get out a cake or dessert even if it's like you eating a meal bro imagine someone coming to you with a Madeira cake after a meal Ooh. listen to this the exactly. first one of the, on like the first week that I did it I went yeah. to someone's house an auntie's house yeah this was before mm-hmm. lockdown so it was that mm-hmm. period between lockdown one and lockdown two right so okay, there's a few things you could do. Yeah. So now we got, yeah, we got <laughs> out. We went to this auntie's house, bro. Yeah. And uh, she's fed us. Cool. I'm eating everything because it's within uh-huh. my diet. That I've, this, there's like yeah. plan that I had. And um, after the food she brings out, only a Kinder cake. Kinder, kinder Bueno. I was on kinder, kinder cake. Kinder bueno. I thought. Bro, a Kinder cake, a cake uh, that's like, yeah, Kinder Bueno. It's got Bueno, it's got uh, the Kinder Egg, it's got all sorts on it. It's a Kinder cake. Kinder Egg, that's classic. Bro. It's like New Age with the classic. What? It was a kin- it's a concoction of Kinder things on a cake. It's a Kinder cake. Is this, is, is this viable or is this homemade? She bought it from somewhere. I looked at the no, cake no, and I thought, no, excuse no, me, no, madam. No, no. You cannot can present such an <laughs> item. Yeah. Do you have a I big enough fork? Topic. <laughs> do you have a fork do you use your hand yeah. absolutely crazy you know why so I be... found like cat... go ahead sorry I'm excited to tell you this next thing no, I'm excited to hear I'll try and rush this in my story <laughs> so go on <laughs> is, you want to be the guest here is like thanks for hosting me Adam here I go uh, 100% go on so she, um, so she brings out this kinder cake bro and mm. all I want to do is eat this cake but I, I've, I've I told my wife to hold me accountable as as much as possible, and she did. And I said, I said that cake looks amazing. And she said it's not that good. She ha- she was having it. My wife was having it. She's like, don't what? worry, like it's not, yeah. And um, so bro, the, <laughs> the point is that that was my biggest. Like, you can't get more of a temptation for Fraser Chowdhury than all of my favorite things. <laughs> a Kinder cake? Are you no? So anyway, I ended up not having it, and that what? set what? yeah that set the, that that set the tone for me because it was just about get through this night, get through this night, get through this night, walk out that door at the end of the night and have not have had mm. that cake. And once I did, bro, it built this superpower within me to decline foods, and declining nice. foods became more and more powerful and 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 empowering, and so. Um, so so that's what it is and, and, and that was in July and I've stayed on that and it's February now so six oh days a week God. I don't I won't have any biscuits any cakes any chocolates uh, for the most part I've like I've started a new thing where I've like uh, I've started indulging in this like low calorie brownie thing so I kind of you could call that chocolate but it, I, I call it within my diet because it's like 75 calories mm. or whatever but anyway um, the 
uh, so I've been doing it since July, and like I said, um, in within a few months, I had lost about seven or eight kilos doing that, That's and it was a made up problem. diet. It doesn't exist. I just made it up. And um, but what I do do is on one day a week. So it's and and I I will eat whatever I want, and so that could be a whole packet of biscuits if I want to. I don't care, and I don't know if there's any science to it. Again, like I say, it just it <coughs> seems to have worked. And that day, that cheat day will be either a Saturday or Sunday. So it's a weekend. And it just depends on, like, if we've been invited, for example, again, pre-lockdown, if we were invited to somebody's house on a Saturday, yeah. I'll do the cheat day on a Saturday to make it easy for myself. Like, they obviously can offer me a biscuit yeah, yeah, party. Yeah. Or if, it, mm. if I've not got anything going on the Saturday, I'll, I'll wait until the Sunday. So there's always a six or yeah. seven day gap between cheat days. Uh, and that's what's been working for me. So I ask you now, before you tell me your story, what's your biggest, like, test with food? Is um, this is this is what I was going to follow on from? My biggest test. Many people say they're saying, "Oh, everything in moderation, impossible." Yeah. How can you have a Jaffa cake in moderation? It's yeah. a packet per session. How can you have in moderation a pizza? So one one slice, maybe a little nibble on a, on and leave a bit later. No, it's half the family size pizza. I in moderation doesn't work. So I have to be really strict. I have to be like, "This is my calorie. This is my calorie limit for today. You cannot go over it." Don't be stupid. If you go over it, you're an idiot. You're going to put on weight. That's the only, it's like almost a prison diet. I've got, it's like prison rules. There's no, uh, I'm, I can't be lenient with myself. Um, but yeah, I've seen the calorie thing work for people. It, it seems to work. It seems to work. So how are you counting these calories? Are you using MyFitnessPal? MyFitnessPal. And with the Fitbit, it like calculates your steps and then takes that into consideration with your calorie count. Then it gives me more calories to eat. No, that's you know what I mean? Yeah, so it can, so it's really cool. It's really um, it's really good for that. But um, you have to, <laughs> you still have to like. So for example, say you you've hit your limit at five p.m. and you're hungry. What you just don't eat? It's it's not. It's like a. It's slightly. It gets you down. Do you know what I mean? Because imagine you you just got okay. Can't eat anything now because I've had seven slices of pizza throughout the whole day. Um, it sucks a bit, doesn't it? Have you been sticking to that then? So if you've by five have hit your limit, you won't eat then. I have been trying to, but it's difficult. Then you're, oh, let me have a little bit of this. Let me have... And then, you know, the little snacks, little bites, they will add up. And then you put on 15 kilograms and then it's uh, the end of the day. So uh, it's tough, it's well, tough. Well, it's tough. The, the, um, the other issue with I find without, because I tried that thing, I heard, <laughs> this is going to sound silly now. <laughs> I heard like yeah. years ago that um, 50 Cent <laughs> in an article was talking about what it was, <laughs> Yeah, and he was like preparing for a movie or something, and and he had said that he one of the things that he did to lose so much weight was he stopped eating after five or six. I can't remember. So I remember, yeah. and I've remember I've heard a few people talk about this, like don't eat in the evening. So have like your last meal about mm. five or six. So I thought I'd try that, um, but it didn't work for me because I can't sleep if I'm hungry. Who sleep? Who can sleep when they're hungry? Can you? No. Um, what I, you can just drink some water. That helps. Um, Mm. But no, because well, like, then you start dreaming about food. Like, you know what I do? This is really sad. Like, if I'm really hungry, I like go on Uber Eats and I put what I want in my basket and I'm like, go on, do it. Check out, check out, check out. And um, I don't do it, but it's like a temptation to go, oh, you really want it, but you don't. Because you've have got you to that, Have you seen that video online of that kid who, um, who, uh, um, he 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 takes a bite of um, uh, salad and he smells the pizza or the cake and he's like <laughs> and then he like bites the salad and he smells big and he bites the salad. He, I, I think I've never seen something like that before. Um, Do you know what I did? I added forty pounds of toppings to it. I added every single topping to the pizza, um, and it came up to about fifty pounds. 50 pound pizza. I was just doing that for fun because I wanted to see. But that was, that's what I do. What if when you I accidentally hungry. to buy? Because nowadays you could do a one click, like pay with Apple Pay <laughs> before yeah. you know it's at your door. I would just say, this is color of Allah. I have to eat this pizza now. Sorry. <laughs> it's dangerous. Sorry. So, yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> I've seen this calorie thing work really well for this one guy uh, who we had on Fresh Grounded once. And what he would do is most days he would have... Uh, uh, so so with my version of the Faisal yeah. diet, the problem with it is that, like like I said, six days a week, you can't touch those foods that you really love, right? Whereas mm -hmm. the calorie way is really good because if you if you, by the end of the day you have a spare 100 calories, that's a uh, really nice chocolate digestive biscuit. That you could nice. you have and that you could potentially have every single day, and so he used to do the calorie counting thing. And sometimes, if he fancied it, he'd save like he'd in 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 other meals he would save himself about 200, 250 calories for the end of the day. And then at the end of the day, he'd have a big cookie with a Ben and Jerry's ice cream and have like cookie dough. 
because he was within Ooh, it was within his right. diet and he was losing and he was losing weight like that. That's mad. Um because it is just calories, um, calories it out is, the day, isn't it? Is, it is, it is, it's it's pretty simple, but yeah, but like yeah, it's hard. I love cookies, I love ice cream, I love bread and cheese. It is the mm. one. I'm also getting into hot chocolate it, now. No, don't. Hot chocolate's good. Because it, 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 it feels like you're nothing. It feels like, oh, yeah, it feels like as healthy as a green tea. It's like, oh, it's hot chocolate. It's got no calories. In. It's got loads of calories. In. How can I have a Cadbury's hot chocolate and th- hot chocolate and think I'm being healthy? Impossible. <laughs> I'm doing well, bro. You can get these. <laughs> you can get these um, low calorie hot chocolates. We've got those in our house. There's like, um, I can't remember. There's these, bro. You can even get. Okay, so you can even get zero calorie. <laughs> Listen to this, bro. You can get my wife will <laughs> the other day for me. You can get this zero yeah. calorie maple syrup. What? How can something be zero calories? What? So I said, so what? You can have a whole bottle of maple syrup and you put on zero calories. How does that make sense? It must be like Did zero you try- calories. Per- no, uh, she's mad. I haven't, I haven't yeah. tried it yet. I said, let's make some. Try um, it, please. Pancakes. Zero calorie pan, pan um, golden syrup or maple syrup. What's the difference between golden syrup and maple syrup? I don't even know what maple means, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> Put it out there. I don't know what a maple means. Is it a leaf? Is it it's a leaf? I was going to say, I think I it's a type of leaf, maybe. I think it's a type of tree sap or leaf. Why is it called golden? It's not really gold, is it? I think oh, you golden syrup is definitely gold. Orange, orange syrup. It's, okay, it's confusing. What is ma- um, maple? I don't know. I, I I don't know, but maple syrup is I think like being in Canada. It's Canada. Maple, maple syrup. Um, maple I'm getting into blankets. Maple, maple syrup. Maple syrup has a Wikipedia page. Really? There's my blanket. Yeah. Um. So it says uh, maple syrup is a us- is a syrup usually made from the xylem sap of sugar maple, red maple, and black maple trees. You're right. The um, tree, it's a tree yeah. thing. Uh, let me just uh, con- command F and type in Canada <laughs> and see if it's a. Can- oh yeah, it's forty thirty six uh, results when you command F Canada on maple syrup's Wikipedia page. So, technological improvements in the 1970s further refined syrup processing. Virtually all of the world's maple syrup is produced in Canada and the US. Interesting. Quebec is by far the largest producer responsible for 70% of the world's output. Wow, 70% of the world's maple syrup is made in Canada. Thank you, Canada. Thank you. Yeah, I'm getting hungry now. Um... This yeah, hot chocolate and pancakes. About. What, what okay, was that supposed to be about? Yeah, go on. No, there was no script. There's no script. <laughs> I literally said to the boys like five minutes before this episode, I said, I have no idea. They were like, oh, um, I was being interviewed about um, like br- some branding thing, right? And it was, mm-hmm. funny, that's when I said to them, I said, I, um, I've got a podcast in five minutes and I have no idea what this is going to be about. I said, <laughs> ended up being about us thanking Canada for maple syrup. So Yeah, Canada, thank you, Canada. Um, what else does Canada do? I, yeah, it seems like a nice a, place. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, without again mm-hmm. polit- political here, yeah. I think Canada was a was a destination that I wouldn't have minded living in in the past. When like when when I was yeah. younger, I was like, oh, I wouldn't mind moving to Canada. Mm-hmm. It seemed like England, but cleaner. I, I've never been to Canada. So I don't know. I don't know why I'm saying it seems cleaner. I don't know. It seems like a bit more fresh air. That's what I feel like. It does. It's like a bit like England. Drivers, oh, a bit. Every house might yeah, have a driveway. Bigger drive. Bigger drive. Bigger like fridges. Like I, you know, when I think Canada, you know, I think of like pine, pine smell. Like a. Can you see when you think of it, you smell the fresh air. I don't know I why. Canada, I've I never been to Canada. Driveways. I what type driveways of driveways? And houses that are not attached to each other. Like, like detached. Like, like a thought, lawn. Thought. A lawn. Like a little lawn. You know those houses with the lawns? What's that? Is that their whole garden? Do they have a back garden? I've never seen these houses with a back garden. I've never seen an American back garden. You're so right. Do they have back gardens there? Because then so everyone true, can see what you're doing in the front. You can't just mess around in the back. Like, do whatever <laughs> you do in the garden. Bro, have you seen, have you seen in America, again, never yeah. been, right? Being extremely uh, ignorant here. But have you seen those houses mm-hmm. that are like... Um, the American houses that seem quite common that are like they look like they're made of like not very 
secure material um and like you can get underneath them and stuff uh i'm gonna have to find i'm gonna have to find an example here um they're like wooden houses tree house maybe i don't know no i saw what it once on a, i saw it once on dog the bounty <laughs> on dog the bounty <laughs> Trevor, Trevor, that was so a great true. show must be true that was a, yeah, um, that was a great show it was all scripted uh, i think that's true american houses uh floor wooden no that's gonna make it look like uh of course it's interior no i'm talking about the exterior dude here you go oh i found it so okay so i'm gonna get this up on screen right uh cool. how do i like, yeah. uh, save image and uh okay so this is exactly the type of house i'm talking about so I'm going to get this up on the screen right now. You should be able to see it any second. And those of you who are watching the podcast on YouTube rather than just listening to it, will be able to s share. Um, here we go. See that? Oh, what's that? It's like a ski lodge. So these houses are quite common, I think. I don't know because I've never been to America. But um, I've seen these houses hmm. and... And look underneath it, you can see at the bottom, like there's a there's like there's like inches between the floor and the house. The house is on like yeah. post. What happens in and so so on dog on this episode of Dog the Bounty Hunter, the guy who was yeah. had a had a the guy who's <laughs> there for hunting was underneath the house. He hid underneath his house. <laughs> but why do they have that gap? Is it for in case a bounty hunter's after you? Can you pick it up and move it? Like, you know, you can put house, houses... Maybe. Have you ever seen on... Have you seen on the motorway sometimes? People have houses on trucks and they're just driving around. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it's, that not, once, yeah. it's not a caravan, but... Mm, yeah, I've straight. seen it. It's an actual house on the back of a truck. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they have more of those in America. In America. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Very interesting. It's a very interesting um, conversation. Um, would you ever live in I a caravan? Uh, well, how would, you feel, how would you feel about living in a caravan? It's a bit tempting to me because imagine like it's like I don't know you've got a huge garden wherever you go. <laughs> the world is your garden. I, I think exactly. that, um, I think the idea of living in a caravan is is a lot better than living in a caravan. I think the idea oh wouldn't mind living in a caravan and then mm. yeah I think very like the, it, uh, when lockdown happened when COVID first happened there was this massive spike in um, people. Uh, getting uh, mobile homes like uh, as in turn sorry converting really? their like vans into homes yeah there's an article about this girl she bought like a, a van for like 50 quid like an old van that nobody wanted and she com completely renovated herself and started living out of it and toured the uk or whatever and would wake up every day and on like a hilly mountain and have some tea and she lived <laughs> in, a, in a van and i think there was a massive spike in that as a as a as kind of like a trend yeah uh, this year mm. i would like to i like the idea of living in a van it's like you. It's like you got no, no. Uh, what's the word? You're not restrained by anything. Like where can I? Where can, I can't. All I can drive, but I can't live and drive at the same time. I I wouldn't mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, after reading that <laughs> article, did I look at vans that had been converted into houses? Yes. Yes. Did I look yes. At the price. Yes. How, and, how uh, expensive were they? <laughs> well, the thing is, is me being all like. Um, <laughs> me i i was yeah. I, I, I was like oh the effort of getting a van and then having to convert it into a house that's not me man so i looked at like pre like luxury like pre-made ones where like a company buys a brand new like volkswagen van and then converts it into yeah. like, a luxury home for you in the back so they were extremely <laughs> pricey but um yeah I, I came across like this celebrity page that does it for celebrities um, converts well, vans and stuff. I might, I might try and find it actually. Seems you just need the, the bed. You just need bed. Maybe a little microwave. Yeah, I don't know where you get a toilet or shower, but no, no, they have. They, I researched all of that, bro. So you um, actually went pretty deep into this. Yeah, I went really deep into it. Really I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> We're not living in a caravan. I don't know, Adam. I haven't given <laughs> a thought. Actually, <laughs> the toilet. Oh, the toilet. You ask. Okay, so the way it works. <laughs> uh, yeah, they uh, <laughs> they they have a system for that. But you have to kind of empty it yourself. Okay, so um, here we go. This company mm -hmm. um, is uh, convert these vans, and 
I'll show you this van. So this is like a celebrity company that does the, this thing as a job, as a living. Okay. I just want to find more pictures before I get it up, just so I can show you all of it. You would need wife. Here you go. Well. Southlands, Southlands Motor Company. Okay. Interesting. Southlands Motor Company. If any of you get a van and you get one from them, let them know we sent you. They have. They don't know who we are. But um, conversions. Let's go on their Instagram. They must have an Instagram page. Come on. Uh, oh, their Facebook. Here you go. 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 I'm just gonna screenshot elements of their thing so you can see it. Again, this podcast is gonna be really bad for those who are not uh watching on youtube <laughs> they're gonna be like, what? so where would you so, even drive to where I, would, would, I, 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 I don't know why i was looking at you because it's not something i would ever do but where would you drive I, to if you if there was a some sort of like i don't know zombie apocalypse slash alien invasion where would you go i think that's a, and you had a caravan where would you do what, what would you do? Well, where would Wales? you go? Wales. I was going to say Wales as well. Wales, you could shout. I don't know why Wales, because it's a little bit close. It's close, mm. and it's like, I'm sure there's a lot of Wales that is empty. Not because yeah. it's not nice. I love Wales. I studied there, but I mean, like, there's a lot of greenery and stuff, especially if you go North Wales. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you a true story about Wales in a second. Um, okay, so this is the round on the outside. Yeah? Mm hmm. Interesting. So obviously the roof goes up, obviously it goes back down and the door closes. And then uh, you want to take a peek inside, Adam? There you go. Wow. Yeah, and the table Wait, folds those, in and all that kind of stuff. Those seats do not look that comfortable. No, no, those, seat, that, those seats turn into a bed. I haven't got the picture of that, but it does do that. Yeah, they turn, they go back into a bed. And then this is the front and then that's a stove. And there's these, like, these gas cylinders there. So you've got the microwave, you've got the stove, you've got plugs. Wow. Yeah, you could do a lot, man. Um I think the girl who converted her, so these Ooh, seats, that's nice. yeah, yeah, they turn into a, a thing. That's nice. So I think the, I think on the article it said that the girl who did it, like with her own van, um, I think I believe she, you know, not to get all crude here, but I think if a person, you know, if the individual wanted to answer the call of nature. Uh, in mm. a self-made van, they would have to use you know public uh, public restrooms and or yeah. uh, restaurants and stuff. So, yeah. What was the question that you asked? Where would you uh, go? So, um, yeah. so, bro, listen to this about Wales. Go ahead. I had a friend, um, and he lived like very north Wales before, and so when we were studying, we were studying Cardiff. He came down for the first time and um, he was like 28 at the time and I was like 22, 21. And he was very sincerely, very beautifully, by the way, Welsh people have the most amazing and beautiful character. He was he was asking me, he, he finally felt after like two years, three years of studying and like going to the lectures every day together, he finally felt comfortable to ask me all about Islam. And he said, bro, I, he goes to me, bro, if I'm honest, you're the first Muslim I've ever met. 28 years bro the second largest or maybe even the first largest religion in the world and he, when he told me that I was shocked because he was such a good friend like you know he's such a lovely guy we'd like go to every lecture together and and, and uh, he goes your first Muslim he goes what is it what does Muslim mean what does Islam mean he goes all I ever know is what you see on the news hmm. and I was like wow man because I obviously being a Muslim I'm always around Muslim so to know right. that actual people exist with that that they actually believe only what they see in the news i suppose mm. goes to show how powerful the news and the media is it's a scary thought right like like imagine you didn't have any interaction with the outside world and your only source of truth was the news you would believe it you would start to, you would believe you would believe anything it says um that's a bit scary but alhamdulillah yeah. the world is more connected than ever um, i don't think that's the case and inshallah it will never be we can always interact with each other. Yeah, that's true. Connection. Connection. My internet connection is quite bad. How is your internet connection? How has it been? I mean, why do you ask? Because now you say that at home it's been a bit up and down. Do you think? Mine's been a bit strange as well. 
Um, in recent days, yeah. Are this in the yeah. studio, the internet connection. The, the internet connection here in the studio is in, it's insanity, bro. You can upload a 4K episode of Freshly Grounded that's two hours long in like a matter of minutes. It's, it's insane. No way. Know, but it's business. It's all like, it's different because like this area is like a businessy area and so they've got all mm. the settings with Virgin and stuff like that. But now at home, yeah, it's been a bit um, up and down the last couple of days. So, you asking has made me suspicious. I don't know. Mine has been strange. I'm I'm just thinking when when's the limit? When's it going to be fast enough? When's it going to be enough? Like, mm. and how much yeah, do I have to pay? I'd say now is fast <laughs> enough. How could you get faster? Well, you can't. What would faster be? Yeah, then, okay, you're 100 meg a second, and then what? 500. What's the difference? I mean, with I don't know. It's true because in like the UAE and stuff, did you know that the internet mm. in like Dubai and stuff is a lot faster than the UK? Really? Yeah, it's a lot faster. So if they have, for example, like 200 meg fiber optic, why would that be faster than 100? I know in, in mm. literal terms, it's double the speed, but right now, if I go on the internet and I click on YouTube, it loads instantly. <laughs> How faster could you need it? True. I can upload something within minutes. I can download something within a minute. Oh, I guess downloading. Download speed could always be better, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But I mean... There must be files that right now would take you 30 minutes to download. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, but then we stream everything now as well, right? So it's it's it's, it's okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Do you think we stream it. everything because we've now become lazier as a society and so we can't even be bothered to download things or do you think it's just because technology allows us to stream so why would you download i think it's because like the business models have changed now so like when you download something you own it it's on your hard drive that is your file but when for example when you stream something it's a subscription so for example i don't own anything on netflix i can't download or you can but you can't download it and do what you want with it so it's like a you're subscribing to a service um so we basically don't own much anymore. If you think about YouTube, Spotify, Netflix, Amazon Prime, what do you own on there? You don't really own anything, right, that you stream. Mm. So it's weird. Like you'd have loads of DVDs back in the day, all this stuff. Now it's just borrow. It's almost like a t it's also like borrowing, right? You're just borrowing it for a bit, streaming for a bit, have it back. You don't give it back, but yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. It's interesting how ownership is like the the big thing now, isn't it? Like all the companies that are really anything financially, like these billion dollar companies and stuff, it's all about ownership. It's all about owning your own content, owning your own data, owning the audience. That's mm. the business, the real business. Like it's masked and and uh, like it, it's wearing the clothes of a company. Like Amazon yeah. is wearing the clothes of a, a company that sells products. WhatsApp is wearing the clothes of a company that... Um, allows people to send messages but the real person is actually it's, it's just a business that they're collecting data so that course, they can yeah. make money off of it what, what did you th think about that what did you think about the whole whatsapp thing when they said um, they're changing their terms of service and stuff and everyone was started moving to signal and telegram did you move or were you like i'm staying on whatsapp so i was already on telegram yeah i was a front runner you know uh, yeah you lean in the way to be honest yeah, I, 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 I saw that like loads of I'd get like oh this person is just on Telegram this friend is just on Telegram mm. and mm. Um, and I thought huh hey <laughs> old friends from what's I, know, <laughs> I, uh, I had Telegram because my I, a work uh, client only mm -hmm. would communicate via Telegram so I had to download it for that some maybe like a year ago uh, but yeah. I don't know what I thought, man. What did you think? You're in this field. You your your day job um, and your career is based around uh, software. So mm. I don't know. What it was, was weird. Like I don't know. Facebook. I don't know if I. I don't know if I. I trust my my giving my data to Facebook. Um, but they own so many of our products, right? Like Instagram and WhatsApp. I don't know. Like the biggest thing. I think the biggest hurdle was like getting people to use the other platform. Like how are you supposed to get your family to start using a whole different whole different platform when they just manage to use WhatsApp? It's too difficult. So it's like, I'm either going to disconnect from those people or I'm just going to accept it. They've got my data. Let me just carry on. It's a weird, um, it's a weird situation to be in. It's like you, we're kind of being held hostage, but like, but you can leave if you know what I mean. 
with I don't know how far you can run though, bro. Like it's the world. As long as you have mm. a a phone, which people aren't gonna not have. Like it's you're now you're in the system. Like uh, it's not it's not like a, you know a few years ago where all this technology was new, so you could opt out by not having a you know a yeah. smartphone or, or or apps on your smartphone. It's it's, it's changed the game now, and um. Mm. Uh, with WhatsApp, I had heard, correct me if I'm wrong, I had heard that actually they hadn't changed anything. They just had to update their terms of services and, and therefore let people know. Is that true? I have no What's idea. I, didn't, Adam, Afghan? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm Mrs. still using Soft, WhatsApp. Mr. IT. <laughs> I, I got a clue actually what's been going down. I think they delayed something. So they moved the terms of service date back or something like that. I don't actually know what's going down. So I just carried on using it because it was too difficult to move. Um, mm. But I don't know. It's um, it's strange because uh, like all these companies, uh, can you ever live off the grid? People say, I'm off the grid. I'm leaving off the grid. Can you ever? You can't really. We're so intertwined in the internet and technology now that companies use our data for everything. Like even like your energy bill. I think even the government website, we can get our what? Like our vehicle tax on there and stuff. That's mm. all. It's all. It's all in the system. So... I pay my yeah, living off the grid is almost impossible now. What did yeah. you do your university dissertation on? Um, my university dissertation was that I made it an. Oh, it was it was not very good app. It was an iOS app that helped dementia patients remember their past, like reminisce about their past. So it was very simple. It was like iOS. I can't even remember which iOS it was. iOS. Such a long time ago now. It was very That's very amazing old. Amazing idea. Uh, it was. It wasn't very good. It, I can't, It was just. Yeah. It was okay. I didn't release it or anything. I just got my mark and just. I put the source code somewhere. I don't know where it is. What, what did you use to create that uh, that app? Uh, because back in the day, it used to be that software X-code. where that's the X code. Is that still in use? It's, you should still exist. Of course, it is. Yeah, it's, it's still really? it's still in existence right now. Yeah. I remember trying to learn X code. The, how did you? How did you go? On? Oh, it was very did frustrating. You? No, it's very. Di- there's a big, there's a big um, diff- learning curve for programming. I feel I'm not mm. good at programming at all. So um, yeah, it's a big learning curve. I think people think it's very easy to create apps, but it's like it's engineering. It's a it's difficult. It's not like a simple thing. But you can learn how to do it definitely. Do you enjoy your job that you do now? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I do. I do. Because it's not. Is it you, is that because it's not as much in the development side and it's more on the? It's like further up the journey. Yeah, it's more like the the human side of technology, so psychology um, and, and computer science together. But it's um it's interesting. I'm never I'm never really bored. You know what I mean? It's you know I think it's one of those things is with the job you've got the typical sides, the boring sides. But a job's a job. At the end of the day, you know what I mean, there's always going to be things that you don't like doing. But yeah, I do really enjoy it. How about you? Because you got the strangest job in the world. I, I don't understand how how do, what I don't understand when you wake up in the morning. What, what do you do? What do you, do you, what do you do? Like, I don't understand. I don't. Do you, like, who's, who's talk, like, I don't understand. I legit don't understand. I get, do you know what I get all the time? The other day I got as well. I got, um, oh, it's really cool, um, fresh and grounded, but what do you do? Like for real or something? Like, what do you do? Yeah, like, what, 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 do, you do actually, what, what, what do you do for real? Like in real life? This is what I do. It's so funny. <laughs> I, wait, I'm like, if you ask my wife, I'm like, I, I, I can be so stressed sometimes because I, I feel like there's not enough hours in a day. I have so much to do. And I don't know how, and I don't know. I think the perception is that it's just a weekly podcast. So every Friday, I just have to have a chat. Just have a chat. Done. Yeah. Oh, it's so, yeah. there's so many elements. Like, loads of, like if you think about just the, before COVID, um, we mm. would do uh, the events, right? And like one event, we would uh, we would know about an event six months in advance. So it would take us six months to prep and plan just an event. So back then it was stuff like, oh um visiting venues it was dealing with the accounts team and well as an accounting professional accounts have our own accounts team it's like accountants um yeah dealing with accountants and the funds involved with running an event licensing and if you think about just one to- like one thing like for example um uh like sorting out some licenses for an event right 
Mm. That could be like a whole eight hour day. And that's just like one small, the smallest of elements. And then yeah. you're talking about like, there's a, there's a, there's a stage where you're, 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 you have to get the ticket stuff sorted and you're dealing with venues about ticket releasing. And then you're dealing with your team about when to release tickets, how to release tickets, your work yeah. on the software, all, all this kind of stuff. And when you're, when you're such a small team and like Freshly Grounded is, I very mm. much so have to um, like either delegate or, or run those, like even this, even the smallest to us. Now we've got to a point, Alhamdulillah, where we've grown enough where I can delegate more. Um, but now that yeah. we're like off of the events and stuff, our our like, regardless of whether it shows or not, like one of our like f- the forefronts of what keeps us busy is the freshly grounded mm. game. It, Alhamdulillah, it, the, the, we never expected the reception that we got from it, and so because of that, there's like uh, there's like dealing with Royal Mail. Um, like to improve our like uh, the methods in which we 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 shipping yeah. stuff. They like send. They, they, we've now like got a contract with them where they're gonna send us like this laser printer, so oh. we don't use as much ink. But um, wow. there's anything from like nice. dealing with like the insides of of like mass shipping and like international mm. and UK shipping, all that kind of stuff. Which, to be fair, Kareem deals with the whole e-commerce side. The e-commerce arm now, just through the game, is like an entire arm of Freshly Grounded. Wow. And my role is more so the content. So arranging episodes with guests. It can be um, arranging um, sponsors and a lot of like back stuff like that. I do a lot of the delegating and dealing with like team members. We just launched a blog. Um, and so as much as it sounds like a blog is like a very easy thing to launch, we just revamped our entire website. And when I say revamped wow. our entire website, a normal company would... Um, a normal company would have the funds and the assets to say we revamp our website and give it to like a development team. We don't have a development yeah. team fresh grinding. So revamping our website was me and Kareem working for a week straight, uh, and in one week wow. turning like a template into a into a site and adding all the different APIs that I needed for that. So I, I think I wear many hats. Sometimes I have to do editing if I edit or I can't get something done in time or um, scheduling and all sorts. So yeah, man. It's uh, it's incredibly busy. I I honestly don't think I have enough time a day. Like if if I was to say what I just did today, the first thing I did is I had to have a meeting with the guy who's taking care of all of our community. Like there's a guy who manages the communities, right? There's like four different communities in yeah. Fisher Grounded. There's the mm-hmm. um, there's now the blog writers. So we had over 130 applicants, and we um, a lot wow. of them accepted as our bloggers. And so now someone so, has to manage around, let's say, like 100 people. Um, and manage their articles and make sure that they're, they're what they get published fall in line with our morals, our um, our like brand, especially grounded. Publi- he has to then like proofread every article, publish every article, decline articles, keep touch. And then that's one community. Then we've got the community of Patreons. Then we've got the community which is like the followers and subscribers and making sure that they're like happy and um, and trying to figure out like ways to make sure we can always improve the service of Freshly Grounded as a community mm-hmm. to them. And then there's the other community, like the hidden community of Freshly Grounded, which is anyone who's ever volunteered for our events or the people who have like worked with us. We want to make sure we maintain a good relationship with them. So that community manager deals with all those. So I had a really long meeting with him today, dealing with like the launch of oh. the articles and stuff. But I could go on forever. And but how did. do you? When did you get time off? When did you give yourself time off? That was literally the thing I was going to ask you. Yeah, but when? How do you recover? Like recuperate and even like just wind down from stuff because you can't be on. Like, are you on all the time? Like twenty four hours? Yeah, I think it's not healthy. I, I, I'm not. I'm very disciplined with my timings. Like, it's very hard to find me working after five unless the only thing I tend to do after five, if after is, is an episode. So like now it's eight p.m. and we're doing mm-hmm. the episode. But a, it's very rare. I normally I have my calendar set up in a way where people can only schedule episodes in with me between nine and five but on a very mm. rare occasion because the episodes are our bread and butter we started with episodes and people the reason people say what do you do in freshly grounded the reason they th- they have that perception is because really and truly the core of what freshly grounded is, is one weekly episode of a podcast that's 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 the cloth the clothing that we wear isn't it yeah and so that has to happen mm. every friday we have to have an episode and so um i'll i'll make i'll like i'll move things around for that if i have to um, but with you, it's more like a chat with a friend. So I, I, this is social for me. This, this is the most fun part of Fresh to Garden. Everything yeah. else can be quite difficult and stressful. Yeah. What, what are you doing in your spare time? Like, I mean, like, what, what are you doing like to relax? Don't say skipping. I mean, that is relaxing. But that. yeah, what are you, what are you doing to literally like this is me time, self care? What are you doing? Because yeah. I want to know. Do you know what I mean? It sounds so. It sounds so like cliche to say. Like I'm like, like I'm um, 
just saying it, but I genuinely love my work so much. I feel like Allah has blessed me that He's given me this Absolutely. platform and this is a, a as a as like a job that I I love it, man. Like Alhamdulillah, Allah Bari, I can't be grateful enough. And so if you ask me what's fun for me, it's anything to do with Freshly Grounded. I'm so passionate about Freshly Grounded and we have such a big goal, bro, like I've told you and so many others. Yeah. I, I literally awesome. like speaking to a brother like you who is so a, a, probably amazing at his job. I have no idea. You could be awful, but I think you're amazing at your job. <laughs> but you have a great personality and you're trying to practice the religion yeah, in, this, in this difficult time, right? So when I see you, yes, on one end, it's, it's oh, I'm having a conversation with a great guy, but on the other end, in the back of my head, I'm going, how can we grow fast enough to employ this man with the salary that he deserves or <laughs> so the same salary that he has so that he can work for a Muslim company it, and, and, not have to, and not have to um, give up any of his morals. He can come to work and pray and have Eid off and mm. have reduced hours at Ramadan and all these things that he would want and need how can we give him all of that so now I, in my head I'm thinking we need to create an arm where a a um UX researcher is required. Not only is he required, but he can be paid what a UX researcher is paid, which which I know I'm aware of. We UX researchers can be paid. Um, the, the, I mean, the the pay can be um, in in IT in general. Uh, can be high and so I want to be able to, mm -hmm. to to not forfeit that because normally when you apply for a job for a company where your morals have to be sacrificed but you have to accept a lower salary so um, I'm so mm -hmm. passionate about it that uh, it's hard to say spare time I, 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 I enjoy my evenings I like to spend time with my family um, about hobbies I was going to say what are your hobbies if someone goes what are your hobbies what are you what? and don't say hanging out with friends that's not a hobby What would you say? Oh man, uh, I suppose it's something, there was something that I'd love to do more of that I can't, I don't do enough. Is like yeah. maybe, um, even though I'm really bad at it, we I used to enjoy every Wednesday we used to play football like the five side and that was yeah. really really enjoyable. Um, and uh, top golf and stuff like that. So like things where you're with people and you're doing something but you're having a, a laugh. Yeah. My favorite thing to do in the world is to laugh, and so yeah. it happens so rarely. The more you grow older, the less you laugh. That you have responsibilities, yeah. you feel responsible, you feel pressure, you feel stress, you COVID mm -hmm. happened, you feel like in a dying mm. uh, industry like the events industry, which is the industry that we were in, especially grounded. Like, yeah. the, the, imagine the stress of I have to put food on the table for my family, uh, yeah, uh, and and all of these different things. You laugh a lot less, and so mm. anything that can increase laughter for me, like having a chat with someone like yourself, who I love talking to because I laugh so much with you. They're the things that make me happy. Yeah. They normally come as a result of going to play five aside football with the boys and making a fool out of myself when I can't play. Or like I playing you. top golf and not being able to hit a golf ball. Do you what do you think you? stop it? Hobbies? So Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but obviously oh, that course. stops. So like loads of my stuff has stopped. But mm. what I like to I like to build things. So like puzzle like a painting or like, do you know, like doing something with like your hands, basically. That's what I mean. You get, it gets, I think I get really fed up just sitting, watching Netflix. Cause back in the day, the old days with non COVID, it was like kind of like a nice thing to sit back and watch a series or watch a film. But now that's the only thing we can do. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm really fed up with this, but I, I don't, people ask, oh, how are you dealing with it? I'm like, I've got no solution. Um, I'm, I'm getting, as I said earlier, I'm getting into blankets. So having a nice blanket, in front of the TV is pretty, it's pretty, pretty damn good. Are you into blankets? I'm throwing it out there. When I you watch TV, you, you, do you have a blanket on the side? Uh, in living room? Uh, yeah, we, we do have blanket in our living room. How many? Is we it just the one? Three. We actually have three. There you go. That, that's a good number. Say three. Yeah. It's got to be, it's got to be around three. Because then you've got to share about, sometimes if you've got a leather sofa, the leather's too cold, so you've got to put something down, so you sit on it. It's a, it's it, it changed your life. A blanket is like, I think it changed your life. Well, the reason we have three blankets is because we made the mistake of buying a sofa that's cream, like before we had Zacharia. And then obviously when you have a kid that becomes stained and stuff. So two of the blankets are big blankets that just go over the sofa when we've got no guests to try and pretend when we do have guests that we are good at keeping the sofa cleaned. And then one, yeah. so one blanket is actually a blanket, like for the use of a blanket. So I, I guess you could say we have one blanket. It's not bad. It's not bad. I've, I'm into blankets. It's like the cut. You know what? The, you know when you hear like the rain on the window and you got like a blanket on. Oh, hot yeah. chocolate. Hot chocolate. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Marshmallows in the hot chocolate. I didn't even know where you buy marshmallows from. Halal ones, anyway. Chocolate. Where do you perhaps as well? 
Chocolate shavings. Oh. Bro, any good halal meat shop will have halal marshmallows. They'll have a little Haribo section where they have the Haribo Turkish halal marshmallows. Do you dip, how did you dip it? Like a chip? Or do you, I don't do well, how do you do it? What's man. The, I don't do hot chocolate. So what do you drink? Okay, other than coffee, are you drinking tea? What do you drink? Because mm, like a hot chocolate like is some- a, I was going to say, like a hot chocolate is like a nice, it's like eating a cake. It's like drinking a cake, sorry. So it's mm. like a treat. Having a coffee and having a tea isn't a treat. Do you know what I mean? Like dipping a biscuit in hot chocolate is like oh. triple in, indulgence. Like, you know, I love no. custard cream. Dip it in biscuit slowly. With, biscuit oh. with tea is nice. With tea? Yeah, with tea it's is nice. Yeah. With the hot chocolate, no? What's your favorite I'm, biscuit? I'm get- favorite biscuit? Three, two, one, go. Uh, um, custard cream, custard cream, mm. custard cream, custard cream. Um, well, you know those nice ones that have nice on it? Mm. I don't know what style. I like those as well. Like a range, like a different range. But custard cream is classic. And sometimes you it, you open it up, you unscrew the thing, and you can yeah. eat it like a like a like a like a cheese on toast. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I think when I was in high school, the the <laughs> you know the corner shops they have those happy shopper brand. So it's like fifty P mm-hmm. or forty P or thirty P for a whole packet of custard creams. I'd yeah. grab one of those and throughout my whole school day I would finish a packet of custard creams. Yeah, that that's awful. That's awful. Well, you just like, like my blazer the pocket, like, oh, yeah. That's that's <laughs> Teacher's awful. gone out for a minute, grab a custard cream, take it to the air, man. I used to do that a lot. <laughs> like a long sherbet that sticks. Yeah, I remember those. I remember those. Oh, man. Have it, have, when is the last time you had sweets? Like a sweet, like a, like a old school sweet, like jelly babies or anything like that. Mm. I have a long time. When I, I when I um the last time I remember having that was at my brother's house. I saw a packet of sour skittles opened uh, on his shelf. And Interesting. Uh, no one no one from the household was in the room at the time. So mm-hmm. I made my way over to the shelf. I mean the you kids were go. there. Yeah. The kids were there. Forget the kids. Forget the kids. You're, you're, you're the kids. Yeah. <laughs> they're not in they're not in this. I they're not a factor I, in the situation. <laughs> I uh I I just dabbled a bit of the old skittles in my hand and before you know it, they're in my stomach, my tum tum. Interesting. But I don't I don't indulge in sweets as in like, yeah. I, oh, I did like a good sweet when I was younger though. I'm just thinking now. We had that sweet shop. When we used to get off the bus. Ooh. What were you into? What and was your? Yeah. What was your I like think, go-to? I think that that sherbet one, that long sherbet one, was probably my favourite. Mm. What about you? You know what? I like a Twix. I love like the biscuit chocolatey. I love a little oh, Twix. I do. What? You don't like Twix? You don't like Twix? Mm, what? No, it's not, it's it's not a my, bis- my list. It's literally the two things which you said you like. Chocolate, biscuit, <laughs> put together. If we're not together, I don't like them together. When I fancy a biscuit, I fancy a biscuit. When I fancy chocolate, I fancy chocolate. What about chocolate digestive? I do like a chocolate digestive. A normal digestive or chocolate digestive? Chocolate. With tea, so the art, with tea. About two, three weeks ago, I was craving it so bad. So now what I do on that one cheat day a week, I will, I will mm. have what I've been uh, like throughout the week. I collect mentally um, things that people say, and it makes me fancy. So someone might man- mention a chocolate digestive. I go, oh, I fancy that, and so I'll keep that in my head. And then on that Saturday or Sunday, I'll go and I buy a whole packet of chocolate digestives. And I did that about two or three weeks ago. I, I indulged in loads of chocolate digestives. Last week it was the M and S. Pistachio uh, and uh, pistachio cookies. Oh, you. pistachio and almond cookies. Nice. This week, it was. Mm. Um, it's going to be tiramisu. I really fancy a tiramisu. That's interesting. That's very. So I'm going to have a tiramisu this week, and I'm going to mm-hmm. have. There's something else. Tiramisu, and uh, I'm going to try that zero calorie maple syrup because I feel bad. My wife. And I'm, I'm into lotus. You know, <laughs> lotus, lotus biscuits. The, the lotus ones. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't They're like nice. lotus they... biscuits. They got a spread as well. The spread is insane. Oh, I like the spread. The spread's nice. The spread's yeah, banging. I love good. that. I could eat a whole bowl of that and be like, "Oh, yeah. is, there, is there more?" Um, but, but the but the biscuit itself, I don't love. Classy. It's classy. It's a classy biscuit. It's like a lightweight biscuit which you offer guests. If if the queen came, you would have a. Why, why are you looking away? 
No, I think there's, I think there's, there's zero other guys to the interviews. They were yeah. at the door, and I think that the cameras are still in here. So I think that they might yeah. get their cameras. So I'll try I thought you were like, "Why is this guy talking about Lotus Biscuits?" Yeah. But yeah, no, there's no one in this room. There's no one. Just <laughs> Lotus Biscuits are are on the on the menu. They're a new thing for me. It's interesting. Yeah, we actually have a um, we we. Well, I don't know if you still have it. But we had a packet of um, a, a, a big packet of individual packets of Lotus Biscuits. I eat each class. Oh, that's, that's, that's so classy. Okay, that's two, so classy. There's two Lotus Biscuits in that packet, and it looks like what you'd get in a hotel. So when a guest come over, you give him a cup of tea on the side of the plate. You just put a nice little present over. It could either look like, oh, how nice and how generous. They give me a packet, a really luxurious packet of two biscuits. Or yeah. it could be like, oh, how stingy are these people? They only want to give me a packet of two biscuits. What if I want to eat yeah, seven true. biscuits? So I don't know um, how it comes across. Yeah. Biscuit, biscuit bin. Biscuit. Give me the whole bin. I'll sort through my favourites. Um, and mm. just, uh, I'll take what I need. That's what I prefer. What do you think about stuff like um, biscuits that have jam in them? Like, I don't know, Jammy Dodgers or those Vienna v- 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 biscuits? V- 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 on occasion, I would, I would divulge into those. Um, I'm not, it's not, I'm not a connoisseur of uh, Jammy Dodgers or jam. Like, you know what I don't like? We chatted about this in the last podcast. So jam donuts are not nice. No. They're not I'm nice. So glad They're not nice. nice. Would you have a custard donut They're- though? I would. We had this exact conversation. Yes, oh. I would have a custard donut. Yeah, <laughs> so a custard donut. Yeah, custard donut all the <laughs> way, but not a jam. Oh, I mean, we're it's the strange. same person. I think that's what we can. Basically, the same person. I think we concluded that, and um, I don't think what else you can fill a donut with, like cream. But jam. So right, Cre- creams. Cream would be good. Lotus um, Bischoff cho- bread. I, lotus, 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 uh, lotus. Um, Do you like peanut butter? Else, but- Again, on occasion, <laughs> on occasion, um, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not a fan of Nutella that much, really. I think it's a bit, it's a bit played out. Everyone, you chuck Nutella on it, chuck it on this, chuck it on that. Do, mix it up, add some Lotus, add yeah. some, it's not that, jam. It's some people some call it Nutella. Nutella. New, is it Nutella as in like, this is the new Teller, like there was an old Teller. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I even think that might even be how it's like meant to be pronounced properly. No, don't say that. Because is there not? Yeah, so. it's hazelnut. It's nuts. So Nutella. Then, One yeah. time, my, my my wife brought home. <laughs> she said, she, I, "I can't remember right, but what it was, but it was something." She offered me something with Nutella. Maybe it was like toasted Nutella. Yeah. So I take a yeah. bite now, and I looked at her to the bite, and I said, "This is not Nutella, is it?" She was. <laughs> I said, this is this is not Nutella. What is it? She goes, that's Nutella. Because um, for her, Nutella is obviously any hazelnut chocolate spread. But yeah. that's not Nutella. And it turned no. out, after a, a, a flurry of questioning, that actually it was like just a hazelnut chocolate spread. And I said, do not bring this inside our household again. <laughs> you know what you're right of you that story you put up and it was like, hey, you were in like some shop and it was like, hey, do you want an Oreo? And it was like, no, it's an Ori. It was like some other weird off, off brand thing. Oh, that was yeah. so funny. That was, was that Lidl? Lidl yeah. really good. Like Lidl, Snick- Lidl do this um, s- a fake version of Snickers and it tastes just like a, a Snickers. It's really good. No it's cheaper, but it's got a bit more fat. Interesting. That was hilarious. Yeah, Lidl's got really good uh, fake chocolates. Cool. Where'd you shop? I wonder if anybody's taken value from this episode of the podcast. I don't, I don't know. It's just I a think bit entertainment mi- mi- is value. It, it is value. I, th- I feel. Escapism. Did you know when you get Maybe like a, got some escapism? It's, we can talk about mental health. Is that a heavy topic? Do you know what I mean? But um, like you gotta just have a chat sometimes and like take take after work, after yeah. whatever you're doing, chill. Take the, like, take the work weight. boots off. Yeah, take the work boots off. Put them up on the sofa. Do you put your feet on the? centre table in the living room yeah of course is that, is that allowed is that allowed yeah I yeah. always feel a bit funny doing that yeah, I feel it's disrespectful probably, it is probably yeah. disrespectful yeah but my ass hmm. my rules my ass my rules do you wear slippers in the house yeah so we have um, we have what's your ruling on slippers for different things uh, you don't have to. You know, I won't condemn you for not wearing slippers, but um, there's various slippers in the house at various locations in the house. <laughs> it makes it sound like my house is really big. Uh, it's just a flat, but um, there's like bathroom slippers in the bathroom and and uh, my general slips, my gen slips. 
Um, nice. And uh, my wife's slippers. And uh, the current sliders that I'm wearing are the classic uh, Levi's classic. ones. You can't say classic and the, Levi's, can you? The classic Levi's sliders. <laughs> what? I don't think there's anything classic. That's kind of new, to be honest. The, the new Levi's sliders. The classic Levi's sliders. <laughs> I had these, uh, I had these, I had these Nike ones before, but I had them for yeah. a while. They've been all around the world with me. I uh, thought maybe it's time, so I just went on ASOS and found, typed in sliders, and they were Levi's ones. I was like, fine, sliders are sliders. Got, they cost about a tenner. That's true. Have you got ASOS Prime Premier next day? Did you? No, do you? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> it's actually great. It's, so it's great. It's, 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 it's so it was just ten pounds a year or something. I know. And, and the clothes I go to buy something at ASOS. They ask me, and I think, oh, I should because it makes sense. But I, I think, think oh, pay ten pound forever or just three pound now. Who knows if I'm yeah. ever going to buy again on ASOS? Let me pay three pound. But ten, yeah, I see what you mean. But then it comes next day, and then it's just yeah. there, and it's like Hermes. So it's like your driver, blah blah blah, will be here between one and three, and they're there between one and three, and I mm. try my new clothes. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, are what, you the wanted... type of person who orders yeah. from ASOS? Like, you like loads of things, so you order yeah. loads of things, and then you try mm -hmm. them all on, and then you return what you don't want. With the intention, you bought them with the intention of returning. You didn't buy them. Uh, so you buy loads of options, because um, I'm going to return most of these, but I want to see which one mm -hmm. I like, and then you return the rest. Or do you only buy what you know you'll keep? I'm like, I tried to get the middle ground. So I'm like, okay. that... I think that looks good. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that, wear it, cherish it for the rest of my life. The second one is like, oh, this could be good because like the way, you look on ASOS and like I'm like, oh, does that fit fit me? I read the product description. It's like the model is six foot two. How how am I supposed to judge like the model is six foot two? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's not my body size at all. Um, <laughs> and I was like, so buy it, see what happens. Um, but yeah, and what I do, I save loads of items and I put them in my bag. I'm like, mm, are you gonna do it, Adam? You gonna buy it? You gonna take the risk? Often I don't usually take the risk because I'm. Do you like, like ah. slowly start deleting them, like change the quantity yeah. from one to zero each slowly, and then you're like, yeah, you're like, left with mm. a pair of trousers and a, and a cap, and you think, yeah, oh, it's I, like, this bag is completely this. pointless now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do I refer all those cool things down to a hat and a, a pair of socks? Exactly, and I sort from low to high. Yeah, I don't yes. I, like, I, and it's never by relevancy. Low to high, work your way up slowly, and I think yeah, like. Yeah. I think like there's a limit of like once it goes like 15 pound plus for like an item like a t-shirt or a jumper then i'm like okay is is this well, where's you're your limit on the wrong store because asos is quite um they do design our stuff and they do branded they stuff do. so if you're looking at that kind of price range you can do boohoo because you can get quite a lot of good stuff but then fast fashion is obviously um uh what's the word it's uh con unethical no yeah i was but, but i was gonna controversial say Controversial. Controversial. Yeah, controversial, which contains yeah. unethical within it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends. It, 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 like, I don't, I don't know anything about how clothes are made, but um, like, usually you can have the good quality. When you pay more, generally you get better quality stuff, right? Yeah, generally. Generally, generally speaking. Generally. Do you have any go-to brands? Like, you're like, when I get that, the quality would be great. Yeah, yeah, I do. I have a... Uh, so, I like... Uh, if I... Okay, so if I bet... What, bet if I buy... Bet, 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 if I buy jeans, right? Interesting. My jeans mm -hmm. have to be from Zara because I found that the jeans from Zara fit well. Okay. I can't I can't spend a thousand pounds on jeans in all these like big brands. A, a, a good pair of jeans from Zara is about 40 quid. They last ages and they fit really well, I found. So Zara, I, I only buy jeans from there probably. Um, and then when it comes to... When it comes to like, recently, I've been buying my recent tracksuit bottoms from Gymshark because I find they fit all right. Ooh, um, it's amazing quality. They're a bit expensive though, right? I got um, I got a discount code because I, no, uh, Black Friday there was a discount. Then no what happened way. is they messed up my order and then they gave me a discount code. And then tomorrow I turned 27. And so oh, sure, the other sure. day, they sent me a birthday card with a, a free 15% code. So I have a 25% code because they messed me up and I have a 15% code. So of course, together that's... Oh, uh, no, no, sorry. A 20% code and a 15% code. So together I'll get 35% off. Wow. So the, other day I thought, the other day I thought, why not buy something from Gymshark, get 35% off? Guess what? 
Guess what? They don't let you combine the codes. No. Mm. Oh, what did you do then? Did you purchase the, the tracky bottoms? I haven't, no, I haven't used anything. You know, I've got the tracks with bottoms. Uh, if you want to... Well, those are nice. Great. That's, That's right. actually nice. That's a great color as well. Yeah. What is that? It's like a marine, marine gray nice socks as well. Zoom yeah, in on wearing, the socks. You can't zoom in. I'm wearing Dickies socks. Were well, they from ASOS? Uh... Dickie's sports brand, uh, I think from ASOS. Nice. Yeah, have you seen these on ASOS? I saw on them. ASOS. I saw them on ASOS. Yeah, I've got a lot of Dickie's good socks. Choice. Good quality. They're really good quality socks, bro. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, and they match my. Uh, they do. They match my. No shoes. way, Marshall, my those are, That's shoes. a great. That's a great outfit. I'm gonna lie. That's um, That's a great. And it's outfit. wasted because I'm just on a podcast. You just go walk around outside for a bit. Someone might see. No one's going to see me in lockdown. <laughs> I, I haven't even got the zoom out lens. I'm just, all you can see is the, my top half. Oh, so. Oh, yeah. Tracksy bottoms are good. Jeans. They're all good. They're all good. What, good so quality. What's your, what were your go-to brands? Um, what, what's my go-to brand? I don't, I don't have any. I don't have any. I feel like I've what seen you in a bit of Adidas. No, yeah, you're right. Adidas is probably Adi my go-to one. Adi, yeah, that's true. It's like generally, you know when you just have a get a medium, I know that'll fit me. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You don't have to I mess like around with sizes. A lot. Yeah. It's good quality clothing. Can't mm. lie. Um, what what coat are you wearing? Have you got a coat? Because that's yeah, tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what are you my, going with coat? So my coat right now, right? Coats can cost hundreds. I mean, they can cost thousands if you're into designer, but they cost, yeah. um, uh, they can cost hundreds. And a few years back, I bought a coat. And so the coat, okay, the coat that I bought a few years back was from Foot Asylum and it was by a company called like uh, Zavetti Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Again, thank you, Canada. And, um, <laughs> and I didn't realize, but like, it's like a um, imitation of Canada Goose kind of. Yeah. Yeah, but can where Canada Goose costs like over a thousand pounds for a coat. Yeah. this cost uh, <laughs> I think maybe cost me like one hundred or somewhere between one hundred and two hundred pounds. And bro, nice. that coat was the best coat I've ever worn in my whole life. So warm, it's got like a fleece inside. It's got all of the pockets you can imagine. For it's, it like it's got this material that like it keeps you warm no matter what. You could be in Iceland. And it's just so warm. And so I, I didn't buy a winter coat last year because I had bought that one two years ago. And um, mm -hmm. and I kept it uh, I kept it because it, it still worked. And so only this year, for the first time in about three years, I bought a coat this year. But um, my, my point was this, bro, that first of all, um, people would stop me and sarcastically, so they knew, and they sarcastically go, oh, nice um, uh, kind of goose jacket. Like mocking the fact that it's not well, random people. No, no, people like f that I knew, obviously. <laughs> like, I <laughs> might be funny. walking past. I would like, do that as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's kind of goose. But, oh, is that kind of goose? And I used to be proud, man. Do you know what? Proudly, no, it's not kind of goose. And it's probably more comfortable, more warm, and still says Canada. Uh, yeah, that's true. But yeah, it, it kind of looks like if you if you if you're conscious of that stuff, it would you'd you could it could make you feel a bit conscious because you could feel like you're like trying to pretend to wear kind of goose. But for me, it was just a great coat. Uh, but this year, I bought my coat of ASOS. Um, it was get is again an amazing purchase, mm -hmm. and uh, incredibly warm black coat. It's got the fleece material inside. Everything just like when you wear it, no matter how cold it is, you feel so warm. Uh, and it was on discount. For sixty quid, oh, a winter really? coat. Like, and it, it wasn't a cheapy winter coat. It was on discount, and it was, um, or, or it might have been from Foot Asylum or JD or something. I bought it online. Amazing coat. What coat are you rocking, Adam? I so I jumped off the North Face. I was like, this is too overpriced. So there's this oh, other company too pricey, called. Yeah. It's too. It's too much, isn't it? And then like, then like, there's this other company called Rab. You might have seen them. And honestly, it's a it's a lovely coat. It's like R A A B. I think great, I great, lovely brand. Like it's like function, but also looks nice. Feels nice. I'm very happy with that coat. It was like 
can't remember how much it was, but it was, it's, I love the coat. I love the coat. I like... Um, I like North Face though. I would like a good. I saw this really nice North Face fleece that I'd really like. Mm. But I don't have any. I have a North Face t shirt, but I don't wear it because it's like one of those skin tight. North Face is like a brand of like extreme sports, right? Um, yeah. And so their clothing is like. Their t shirt was very skin tight. So unless you got a six pack, your, <laughs> it's not a flattering t shirt. And it says never stop exploring on the back. <laughs> I wouldn't wear that. That would, I would, yeah. I like, oh, yeah. Boots. Oh, there's Rob, but it's R A B. Is that the one? Not R A B. Is it? I don't know. Where's the coat? I don't know. Mm, yeah, that looks like a good coat. It's, they are good coats. You know what I like? I was talking about t shirts. I like t I like wearing a good coat, a warm coat, with just a t shirt underneath. I don't like to load up underneath really? a t shirt because. Did you know something when we used to go on the tube back in the old days? Um, mm. It used to get too hot. Like you just get become it becomes like a blast furnace in there, and it's horrible. So I, I like I like the t-shirt and yeah, coat you're combination. Right. On the tube, you're right. On the tube, you're right. I'll show you my coat. I've got a sh I've got a picture on my Instagram of me wearing my most recent coat, the sixty quid one. Interesting. Now that I can throw images on the screen, why not? This is great. It's great that you can see what I throw on the screen as well. It's really cool. It looks really... Oh, that is a nice Marshall love. That's a great nice coat. Right? That's a great it's coat. Cool. It's 60 quid and it's got like fleece material inside. It's like... Yeah. And look, if you know... Would you notice about the socks? Dicky socks. Exactly. I like that. What, what is that? What, I've ne why am I not doing that? Putting the socks over. I don't know why I started. I you know why I started. You know why I started doing that, and now I haven't stopped because I had a pair of Adidas tracksuit bottoms, but I hadn't mm. bought Adidas tracksuit bottoms before. So I bought medium, thinking I'd be medium, but actually I'd probably be a small. But I'd never buy anything small. Uh, it feels weird yeah. to buy something small. So I bought I bought medium, thinking that that's my size, and they were a bit long. And so if I ever wore the Adidas tracksuit bottoms, I'd have to wear them with a good pair of socks so I can do it like that because otherwise it kind of flary and I, I i didn't want to waste the great adidas tracksuit bottoms and so i first started because that and then i just ended up keeping at that that little trend i like that i'm gonna do that um do you're gonna have it copy you, yeah i'll have it i'll take it you know ages ago when we were on my channel i copied your trousers as well yeah like you you, you had to say yeah i I say, yeah, I got those. I, I saw those trousers. Where would you get those from? Where did you get them from? There was some other. Was it Boohoo? Yeah, Boohoo, I think. Yeah. You're probably the only person that's ever taken fashion inspiration from me because I'm the. I'm actually very much so not a fashionable person. And, me neither. Uh, so the fact that you've taken fashion advice from me is quite humbling. Well, I took... I'm, I, I'm actually I did trying to find good. some old coat. I uh, get... Oh, this coat was good. I f this coat, right, is like a board jacket. And I, I'll show Whoa. you, I really liked this coat. This is a picture from back in the day where I look like really, I'm trying to model. Oh, it's incredibly embarrassing now. You but have to show it. This jacket, this isn't the... This isn't the is that jacket. you? Whoa! Bro, that jacket was about 25 uh -oh. quid. No way, that looks great. Yeah. It's a nice that jacket, looks that great. One. I can't know where it is. Yeah, great. Do you ever lose That's clothes? A great... Yeah, I lost tracksuit bottoms, clothes... Um, I don't know where they go. Socks, socks are the go. worst. Socks are the worst. I don't tend to lose socks, but I have, I've, I've lost a lot of clothes and I just think to myself, where could it possibly be? And when I think of all the possibilities and they're not there, then you get a bit confused. You get confused, right? I don't know where yeah, they go. Um, Adam Afghan, it has been an absolute honour and pleasure to have you officially grounded. <laughs> For our four Anytime. year anniversary, um, it's a good anniversary. Attended. But um, I, I, I absolutely love having you on Fresh Your Grind, as you know. Uh, it wouldn't feel right doing an entire episode of podcast with you without mentioning, as I have every time, that you are indeed my favourite guest. <laughs> you gotta stop saying that. I mean, you should put it on some type of. Uh, I should get a card or some type of T-shirt yeah. with it on. Um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I'm always grateful that I'm. The top cast. Even to be on here talking is nice. It's lovely to hear from you, and I'm I'm just sorry to everybody that when you're on here, that I enjoy the conversation so much that I forget that we're on camera and I end up talking more than the guest. So my deepest apologies, but you bring conversation out of me, and I very much so enjoy. I'm it. Around. 
I'm very glad about that. Adam, you look after yourself, man, and uh, keep inspiring. I know we didn't talk much about your amazing work uh, that you're constantly doing for mental health, but, um, you know, uh, those of you listening who are going through a, a rough time, um, if you're a, a brother and you need a bit of assistance and you just need a bit of motivation, uh, Adam's DMs, I'm sure, are going to be open for you always uh, sure. because he himself massive proponent of, of mental health and, and, and likewise for me has helped me uh, just in a little conversation. So I, I would recommend it. So thank you, Adam, for all that you yeah. do. And uh, inshallah, I see you in a, in a few months, perhaps for, for another episode of F.G. Anytime, any place, anywhere. I'm there. Like thank that. you, man. Really appreciate it. Take <laughs> care, guys. And we'll see you on next week's episode of Freshly Guarded. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.